I'm still very skeptical. I think when we look at the plans that they have for this first phase, it really kind of makes us scratch our head. Like, they're not doing what Marvel did. Why? 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 Disappointed! Should the DCEU characters stay in the DCU? We're starting to see a little bit of this, right, Bone Bridger? You know, we got the possibility of, of James Gunn's wife coming back, the possibility of Peacemaker, Amanda Waller. There's even the possibility that Ezra Miller might come back. What do you guys think? They allegedly want Wonder Woman or they don't. So someone's lying. James Gunn's lying. Gal Gadot's lying. Not sure who's lying there. But either way, yeah, they want everybody back except Henry Cavill. Makes sense. He's so old, 40 years old. When you look like a Greek god and you're 40 years old, kick you to the curb. That being said... I do like the new actor that they, I do. I've seen him in a bunch of stuff. I think David will do a great job. There's no clean cut reset. It's not happening. There is not going to be a clean. Jason Momoa will either be Aquaman or Lobo in the f future. But right now it seems like it could be Aquaman still because he might be both. <laughs> he, he might be both. And that is too much for the normal viewer. Like the normal viewer is going to be like, nope, we're not doing that. <laughs> There's a very select few dceu actors that have this really cult following you know you've you've got your henry cavills obviously but you've also got your gal gadotes you've also got your margot robbies there's a lot of people that are very very into these characters and they would like to see their favorite iterations of these characters be in this new universe i feel like they shouldn't do it as much as people like Jonathan, you know, are crying in the fetal position about the Henry Cavill thing, I can tell you that the reason I'm for moving on completely from Henry Cavill is because I think it, it sets the precedent that they don't really have to do it with anybody. And I know that they're flirting doing it with people, which is not something I'm a fan of, but they could always point back to anybody and say, no, we didn't even do that with Henry Cavill. And that's kind of why I think they're looking to do it. It would be a way to actually try to move things forward. Will they? That's the question. The question is, will they? And after the way things are getting left in some of these movies, it makes me think that there's at least going to be a little bleed over from the DCEU in this new universe. I don't know who it's going to be, but it makes me think there's at least going to be just at least one or two. They're going to eke through and they're going to, they're going to do the same thing that they always do that drives me crazy and explain it all via multiverse. And it's going to be a ridiculous thing, but anyway, yeah. so they yeah. don't need to start. They don't need to start things off with the multiverse. Concept. Exactly. They they really don't. They need to go ahead and put it in their brains that we're not going to do that for at least five, but really, honestly, 10 years away. But look, here's the thing. They've already confirmed. James Gunn's already confirmed. They're going to do a Waller HBO Max mm -hmm. series with the same actress, Viola Davis. And does anyone ever really care about Viola Davis as well? I don't, I don't know that that's a big look, deal. Just yeah. like Henry Cavill, okay? I love Henry Cavill with all of my heart as Superman. I love Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. I think she's perfect for the role. She really makes me believe that she's this evil, twisted, I guess you could say, corporate persona that she plays. I mean, she just does a great job in that role. But just like Henry Cavill, I agree with you guys. I think that everything needs to be washed away. Henry Cavill is my all-time favorite Superman. I don't ever see anyone doing better than at Wonder Woman than Gal Gadot. But with all that being said, we need to recast that's the only way you're going to distance yourself from that old DCEU. The only way. And even that, like we talked about in the last video we did, even the first couple films, I think it's very likely they're going to flop or be close to a flop, not make as much as they could have because they're going to be associated with that old DCEU. Then when you have John Cena coming back, you got James Gunn's wife coming back in these roles, it's going to muddle the, the waters even more, make things even more confusing. The question this video is asking is pretty easy to answer. They should not, absolutely should not bring any of these characters back. If you're friends with James Gunn, though, you're coming back because that's the one thing he will do. And I mean, I don't even necessarily blame him. It's just a bigger problem with DC. He's bringing back, and I like John Cena's Peacemaker. Don't get me wrong. Like, I totally <laughs> like him. But when you keep one, then you'll keep another, and then you'll keep another. Mm -hmm. Well, we might as well keep, well, we're keeping Waller. We'll keep Peacemaker. And it just becomes this never ending, you know, maybe they did try to keep Wonder Woman. Maybe Gal Gadot is being honest. Maybe she's not the one lying or 
it's like you both said, if you're going to reset, reset, they're not going to do that. It's a partial reset where they're going to use certain characters and not use others, but they didn't set it up at the end of the flash. And I think that's where you needed it to, to do it. I get the whole George Clooney Batman reference yes. that there's going to be like a mixture. It's like, Oh, there's Ezra. But does that mean we're staying in that universe with George Clooney? Seven million. Never leave the cave without it. We're not right. Like we know we're not, they should have made that clear. I think that there should have been some kind of like, this is where we're headed. When you get a character that people are very emotional about and people love the actor that plays that character, it becomes very, very hard for that audience. What you end up with is, is essentially what we've ended up with now with Hugh Jackman and Wolverine, where nobody wants to see anybody else play Wolverine, but somebody else has to play Wolverine. That's just yes. like Hugh Jackman is a hundred now. There is just no universe in which it's going to make sense to introduce him into the MCU as the Wolverine for this new X-Men. But this is what people want because they loved what he did with the character and they're, they're nostalgic about the fact that he's played Wolverine for 20 years and they just can't get over the fact that somebody else could do something that they possibly don't like in the role of Wolverine, but you have to let that go. In the DCEU, I understand that people get emotional about their characters. I cannot believe that anybody is overwhelmingly emotional and clamoring for these characters to just, we've got to see these guys come back. I just don't see that. You know, the, the DCEU was, has been such a train wreck that I would think that the real fans would want to just move on and be be ready to go. It feels like that's just not the way that it's being taken. It feels like James Gunn is kind of trying to listen to a certain section of the fan base that says, oh, we kind of like seeing Jason Momoa with his shirt off. And, oh, we think Gal Gadot was good in that first half of that first movie. So we really want to see her come back. And instead of listening to the fan base, because quite frankly, there are times that giving the fans what they want is what you need to do. We discussed that before. There are also times when listening to the fan base is just like, you're never going to be able to make money by listening to the fan base. And this is one of those instances of bringing Ezra Miller back makes absolutely zero sense. The guy is a powder keg. At some point, something is going to happen and you're going to be like, why did we ever bring him back? And if you introduce him into this new continuity, you're stuck with it. OK, he is the flash. If you put him in there, <laughs> it's kind of one of those situations you just kind of have to say what are they doing here are they really trying to do a reset are they trying to kind of do a halvesy are they kind of trying to you know keep some of these characters that people like it feels to me like james gunn wants to do it a certain way but he's also kind of maybe being pushed by the studio to do it a certain way so we'll, we'll see i don't know yeah that's what we better hope and pray that doesn't happen is exactly. more studio meddling because at the end of the day i think that's probably the largest culprit for why things went the way they did with DC or the DCEU the first time around. It's because they kept getting gun shy and nervous about how things were looking like they were going to start going. So they would change directions on a whim. As far as your point with Wolverine, I think that given where the MCU is right now, currently firmly entrenched in the multiverse saga, we're not going to be seeing Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine moving forward in the new, in the new X-Men films or the mutants or the X people, whatever they're going to call it. <laughs> it's funny that people call it the X-Men. There's a lot of female, um, of female superheroes in that X-Men group. So I think it's outdated. Wow. I think that they're just bringing this variant back. Similar to what we got with John Krasinski. I don't think that we'll ever see that version of, um, I wanted to say Stretch Armstrong, Mr. Fantastic, <laughs> <laughs> back to the MCU again. You know, it's just kind of a one-off like, okay, the fans were clamoring to see him play Mr. Fantastic. So we're going to give you that and show you why you're the fans and we are the decision makers. And then we're going to give you the real Mr. Fantastic. So, yeah, I think it's similar with the Hugh Jackman situation. So don't fear, Tim Collins. We're going to get to see our beloved Hugh Jackman come back just one more time, maybe twice in Secret Wars. And then after that, he'll be gone. And look, some people have a problem with that. It seems like you might have might have a problem with that, Bone Bridger. <laughs> but I, I have a problem with Secret Wars, Hugh Jackman being back. That's for sure. Oh. I, I think that that's bait, bait and switch. I think that's the... Marvel executives trying to leak some rumors. To, I think he's back for Ryan Reynolds in Deadpool 3. I think his friend convinced him. But but how I, cool would it be to see him on the screen with Tobey Maguire Spider-Man? Not at all. Not Only at if all. he takes Toby cool out. Rated R, Toby's <laughs> at the totally quarter. 
personally, I would love to see something like that. I think it'd be really cool. Uh, every you know, movie can't be not? No Way Home. We need to stop that. Every movie can't be No Way Home. Every movie can't be Let's Bring Every oh, Hero, that's ever, every actor that's ever played this hero. That's where the MCU is messing up right now, in my opinion, is they just they just keep trying to throw these cameos in here. And, you know, they did it in Multiverse of Madness. They did it in No Way Home. I just cannot get over what they're doing with that right now. And everybody knows, if you've watched any debates between me and Jonathan, that I just absolutely despise the multiverse concept to begin with, which is why... The, the reason they're pushing Secret Wars is like my my big thing. But I feel like DC has, they've got a, an opportunity in front of them because unlike the MCU, DC has a, a universe that almost nobody cared anything about. And they don't have to be beholden to a certain level of the fans. They can just say, yes, you people that absolutely love Margot Robbie, you're just going to have to deal with it. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? That this isn't a following like they held had with the MCU where they built up over 10, 12 years. It's never been successful. And so they can just kind of say, well, we're going to do things a completely different direction. Trust us. We've got the right man in charge and, and go that way that they've got the perfect opportunity, but it sounds like they're not going to do that. In my mind, this is what I think about. Okay. We got the multiverse saga concluding with secret wars so why not go out with a bang, top yourself more so than you did in Endgame, have three times the amount of people coming out of those portals, and we get those moments. You know, We get the moment of Steve Rogers, played by Chris Evans, and then all of a sudden right next to him, he looks and he sees the Human Torch, played by Chris Evans. I just, I'm a sucker for stuff like that. I know everyone doesn't love that, but... I think it's a high possibility we're going to see something along those lines for that film. I just think that that's the perfect way to conclude the multiverse saga. Am I well, that's, that's what Secret Wars is. And so it's, I mean, it's almost definitely going to be something like that. Trying to stay on topic with DC, unlike Secret Wars, they don't necessarily have the characters in the clamoring from the previous universe where they really have to do that. And I think that that's the difference. So Yeah, I agree. I think right now for at least, like I said, the next five to 10 years, they don't need to go that route. Mm -hmm. yeah i think that dc the thing it has going for it is its failures and i know that's crazy but like the failures have allowed an opportunity to reset like aquaman 2 is going to make no sense i'm totally accepting that then you could just start over and i know it's going to be a little weird with some characters but i might be able to get on board if you make a good superman movie i'll get on board if waller's a good tv show i'll get on board if it's bad, I won't, but at least there's not a high expectation. Secret Invasion's a great example for Marvel for comparison. What they did with Rhodey's character, by referencing him in that gown, the same gown as Civil War. So what you're saying is that the first person that goes up to Iron Man in Endgame is not Rhodey. It's a scroll. It's the first person that goes to see Iron Man after his great sacrifice. When you do things like that, you diminish the brand. Like the whole brand took like a whole step. So I hope that Secret Wars doesn't further diminish the brand i definitely think you can't ever put anyone else in the iron man suit for a very long time or you're going to have instant backlash like if it's not robert downey jr in the iron man suit and it's not a total joke people are going to be like nope you know batman you could switch which is kind of ironic you can put a different person in the batman suit and people will either like them or you know like someone else more but Robert Downey Jr. submitted Iron Man in a way that if you put someone else in the suit, I think you get actual backlash boycotting. Like I think people would not go for it. Secret Wars is a huge potential brand damage in my opinion. Or maybe they do it right. Maybe it's great. I just don't see it. Only time will tell. As far as the DCEU, yeah, I, I mean, I think that we all we're all in agreement here. They need to separate themselves from what they've done before, give us something brand new, and earn our trust back inch by inch by inch film by project by show by video game whatever everything's supposed to be connected now mm -hmm. so yeah earn our trust back which i think james gunn will do and another issue that we talked about this earlier but it's also hard to quality control when you're going from three projects a year to eight or mm -hmm. ten even i think that didn't we didn't we get maybe not ten but i think we got a crap ton of, of marvel projects last year correct well, there's more phase four projects than all of phase one, two, and three. Like that, yeah. if you count phase four and extend it into five, counting the shows, there's just more. Like they just did more than all of those. It was it was either 2021 or 2022 when we got like four Disney Plus shows, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I think that was the year we got Loki and the year we got Falcon and the Weird Soldier. Wanda. Yeah, uh, WandaVision. Those, yeah, Hawkeye. I think. 
those three came out in the same year. Then Hawkeye, Ms. Marvel, She-Hulk, some of the others came out in 2022. So, yeah, we got in a lot of projects. It's hard to keep up. Moon Knight. Dial it back a bit, and hopefully DC will learn from Marvel's mistakes and give us something that's completely different. I, I feel like they're not, though. And I, I feel like they're even going a different direction than Marvel did by introducing different mediums. The fact that Creature Commandos, for example, is going to be one of the big launches for the new DC Universe, and it's a it's an animated series, correct? Or a feature, which is really interesting, right? We're going to meddle in animated. Now, don't get me wrong. I would love the concept of a DC animated universe, but that's not the direction that they're going to go. So why are they introducing it that way? And then they're looking at the Waller series. They're looking at the Booster Gold series. They're looking at, you know, some of this other stuff that's coming down the line. And I'm thinking to myself that it seems to me like they're kind of crowding their content maybe with things that can kind of help reset DC a little bit, kind of help kind of move on from everything being dark and everything being weird to kind of maybe being a little looser. I, I don't know if that's what they're trying to do, but whatever James Gunn is doing, I'm sure that the projects themselves are not going to be terrible. But how will they all weave together and how will they weave with the characters that we love? That's going to be the question that everybody wants to know. I just don't know that there's a good answer to that right now. I'm still very skeptical. I think when we look at the plans that they have for this first phase, it really kind of makes us scratch our head. Like they're not doing what Marvel did. You know, Marvel essentially came out the gun and said, we're going to start with Iron Man, and then we're going to move on to Incredible Hulk, and then we're going to do Captain America, and then we're going to do Thor, and we're going to we're going to build our team over time, and then you're gonna you're gonna get a compilation film, and that is going to be essentially the launch of the whole universe now, where everything ties together. DC doesn't appear to be doing that. What they appear to be doing is kind of introducing a, a bunch of characters that we're not as familiar with, and then by the time we get to that point where where we're introducing these big characters with Superman and, and Batman. And I think there's a lantern show that's planned and all that kind of, or, or something, but we need to build the team first and then focus yeah. on, you know, all the stuff that we can do to fill in the gaps. And it feels like they're doing it backwards to me. It's also interesting that guy Gardner, green lantern and Hawk girl among mm -hmm. others and Mr. Fantastic. I'm sorry, Mr. Terrific will be mm -hmm. in the Superman film. So it's yeah. almost like, this universe has already kind of been around for a little while. You know, we've already had our Superman and our Batman's got a whole Bat family established. Yeah. And we finally get Brave and the Bold, Batman Brave and the Bold. This could go to hell in a handbasket really quick. <laughs> it's just going to be interesting to see how they pull it off. James Gunn obviously is not directing every film, but he's going to be, you know, the Kevin Feige-esque figure kind of overseeing everything. So there's rumors that Crypto could be in the Superman film. And that, once again, could go you know, off the rails really quick if not done properly. I think that that's the, the thing. It could go, could go a lot of ways. I trust James Gunn in some ways, but this isn't James Gunn writing every project. This isn't mm -hmm. James Gunn directing every project. Exactly. He has to be different. It's why I think Kevin Feige was the right man for the job whenever he had creative people under, like writing movies underneath him. And now he's the wrong person for the job to fix what, what's wrong with Marvel. He's Because he's just letting it happen. Like Secret Invasion... He just handed them the keys and said, this doesn't matter. He literally told them the only continuity thing that they had to worry about was Nick Fury getting on the ship at the end. He should have been fired the second that happened because they, what they did is Guy is the most powerful superhero in any cinematic universe. She could fly through Captain Marvel and then disappear and mind control her all at the same time. Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. It won't matter. It doesn't mm. have any consequences. Did he even look at the script? Did he even know? Literally, about apparently the only conversation was, he said, you have to make sure that Nick Fury gets on the ship at the end. And other than that, you can have as many powers as you want. You can use any, you could throw Thanos and Captain Marvel into Gaia and it'd be okay. Wow. Yeah. That was a very poor decision, you know, <laughs> and ultimately here's the thing. No one watched poor. it though. So I guess it's okay. To say the least. Yeah. Wherever you were going ended with Nick Fury making out with a scroll. <laughs> that's where all roads in marvel end right now until yeah, loki that, comes out all marvel roads end with nick fury making out with a green alien the, the biggest problem with secret invasion and this is something that i think that dc can learn from secret invasion kind of you know and, and marvel to their credit they flirted with this once and they never revisited it and that was the idea of a cop-out villain where you think you've defeated them and then oh there's one scroll that got away 
and that scroll found other scrolls. They flirted with this with Ultron once, and Ultron was always the cop-out villain. He always was the one in the comic books where you think you defeated him, but then, oh, somebody left a TV on, and Ultron got in the TV before he got out, you know, and before you destroyed it, the robot he was in. And that's the kind of thing that DC needs to kind of avoid, in my opinion, because when you're dealing with a cop-out, type villain it can get to that situation where the the storylines then we have to go back and look at the storylines like roadie in the gown and does it really make sense with the story that we always that we've had in place since then does it make sense moving forward now that guy is this this all-powerful being and all that kind of stuff and ultimately i think dc can learn from that and i hope that they learn from that because if you give the, every villain the capability of just kind of almost always getting away, that's when it's not going to be, especially when we're not talking about like one villain, we're talking about where it can be a whole army. That's something that in my mind changed the MCU for the worse moving forward, because it's going to be in the back of everybody's mind now. Whenever we're watching an MCU film, we're going to be thinking, who are the scrolls? Are they friendly? And is this going to be something that we're going to have to pay attention to for down the line? And that's kind of the stuff that I think if DC can avoid that, I would. I don't know if they're smart enough to because there are a lot of people in place that are probably going to think that maybe something like that would be a good idea in the DCEU. But uh, we'll see. Guys, make sure you let us know what you think down in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Check Bone Bridger out on YouTube. Check us out on our other social medias. And until next time, have a good one.